the tools are changing so fast. I think it's a little bit more of how do we just prepare ourselves for what's coming? Because the platforms are adjusting. Hey, Tristan. I can never come back this month. Let's make it super easy. Started doing what we're doing. One of the most common topics in today's world, not just real estate, but in today's world, but especially real estate, is conversations around AI. Some good, some bad. I'd say more on the good side in the sense of how it can create efficiencies for your business and all of the different ways that you can use it. And as I was racking my brain recently about talking to a guest who can talk the talk, walk the walk, and can help you, the listener, understand the best ways for you to build AI into your business, how to use AI. You know what I say. I say that uh, AI may not in the short term replace humans, but those who don't embrace it will likely be looking up at those who do embrace it. And that is going to be the big difference in the future of your business. And that is why I reached out to Chris Tam, who has a very rich background in not only real estate, mortgage, insurance, uh, building a platform that all of you know called Firepoint, uh, but now has gone super deep uh, in AI and automation. And Chris, I'm I'm watching, I'm seeing you and Tristan talking about this all the time. And frankly, I just thought, hey guys, can I can I talk to Chris? And and that's why we're here, dude. I'm I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Yeah, thanks for having me here. And it super interesting conversation in general as far as what it can do, where it's going. I mean, there's tons of uh, proposed experts. Um, I think it's great just to have the conversation, see where everybody sees it going and kind of what the collective genius ends up doing with it. I, I love how you said that too, because AI is kind of a lot like social media. There really is no true quote unquote expert because there's no formal education in this. There's no deep rooted background in this. It's just like come, you know, out of nowhere as a freaking tornado. And now here we are and we are becoming there are becoming experts by the use that you know how much they're using it how much they're testing it and you know i can speak to that in the social space and that's why i'm excited to talk to you today because we're i think we're going to go deep i'm going to listen folks i'm going to ask chris questions on how this is going to benefit you and uh, so you want to stay stay tuned in but before we get there let's set the stage on who this chris tam is some of you know him very well some may not know him at all. So Chris, tell us your story. How did you, what led you to where you are today and kind of uh, positioned you in this in this place? Yeah. Um, so we'll try and keep it in a little bit of a box. I come from more of a corporate America background. So super structured, I mean, everything in place, um, run large teams and worked in large scaled organizations and got into real estate 2010. Um, built a real estate team, closed over 400 homes a year. Uh, we were largest in Colorado at that time. Um, built a title company joint venture. And then from there, got in and was the founder and CEO of Firepoint Solutions. So built a CRM. Uh, we ran hundreds of teams, processes behind the scenes, their agents and automation and deep reporting. And that didn't finish what I wanted to do in business though. And so around 2017, uh, our operating team, we started three other companies. We have a marketing company, cash services that has transitioned into AI and automation almost fully. Um, we started ownership mortgage, ownership insurance, uh, which have hundreds of partners there in the real estate space. And then more recently, in the past couple of years, when we started building AI and automation into the mortgage company, the marketing company, and the insurance company, we started getting a lot of attention with it. So I get picked up by a couple different large business coaching organizations, the number one, number two in the world. And I speak internationally to business owners and to executives, training them not on chat GPT, but how to use AI in their businesses to get that 10 X, that hundred X leverage and how to be creative with it. And so we've done a lot of different AI implementations. We have some pretty large projects, even in the real estate space now, but we've done AI and machine learning conversions for healthcare, employer benefits, obviously a lot of different places in the real estate space. And so we've got to see a lot of just really neat use cases as far as how people are putting this together and how they're using it real world. And so there's obviously the real world today, how you can make money, get leverage, but there's also like looking at the next days, weeks, months, and years, but even the next weeks and months, uh, those tools continue to roll out. So super important to kind of keep the finger on the pulse of the market and what's happening, because I, I don't personally want to overlook that tool that'll give me the next 10 X leverage, mm -hmm. but we can't spend all of our time just researching, got to do our jobs and spend a little time on the craft. 
It's interesting um, what you say about you've been working in this. And so what you just described to me sounds much deeper rooted than what most of us know AI to be, which is technically the birth of it to most of us was really November. Uh, yeah, it's been kind of taboo, but not mainstream. Like it all of a sudden just like got shot out of a cannon. So yeah, how long have you been working on AI? So I've, this goes back, um, not for me to the 1980s, I would have been too long. Um, but we've been working on it for five years, um, pretty deep as far as implementing pieces of it. And now kind of the, the public launch is just because now it's cheap and it's consumer use. And so a lot of people are just adopting it in larger and seeing how they can use it. But it really, I mean, if it goes back to the 1980s, the conference, uh, artificial intelligence conference, 1980 in Stanford, expert systems. I mean, there were computer programs that could draw. There was this, like all this, the text writing stuff. This is all back in the 1980s. I mean, it started back with DARPA in the 60s, but there have been people using these tools for the last 40 years. I know some people personally that were using these tools 20 years ago, not under the same names they are, but inside of other big scaled businesses where computers were making decisions, changing and tweaking things, and actually organizing uh, labor and how systems run. So for some people, they've been using this back for 40 years. And for some people, it's the last four months. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think is it that caused us to get to the place that we are today? You know, what is it that took, I guess, so long? Because I think for most of our listeners, myself included, again, you know, I know AI has existed, but it just was kind of over my head, right? You know, and I knew kind of what it was. You think about bots, that's, that's the way I would kind of articulate it. Uh, but now all of a sudden, again, it's become like, if you're not playing around with ChatGPT, you're literally living under a rock. And yeah. and so uh, what what is what was it that caused that really to happen just this past fall? Um, I think it's marketing and it's just packaging a product in a way that the consumer can use it. I mean, somebody could have packaged these tools five years ago and done it. It would have been more expensive, but you have all these different pieces coming together as far as how inexpensive computing power and cloud computing has been. Um, you have now that's become more public, you have the collective genius of kind of the the world's programmers coming together and figuring out what they should roll out, what people want to use. And so even the last four months, we've seen an explosion of third party tools that are built on top of these as the scaffolding. And that's where I think the everyday person starts to get excited when they see, hey, I don't have to read that or I don't have to write that or I don't have to analyze that. They start really seeing their life changing, whereas previously, yeah, it made Expedia booking a little bit easier. And I loved when I typed an email, it would auto-complete part of a sentence. That's still AI, but it's the use case that gets people excited about it. So these are the use cases that are now getting attention. And even some of the next use cases that are either being held back or not released yet, um, it's the use case that gets people emotionally excited when they can see, okay, that can save me 20 minutes today, or that can help me spend more time with my family. That's where people really start to get adoption. And the corporate space, you had like the AI summer and the AI winters and in the AI winters, most corporations went and said, Hey, we're just going to develop this for ourselves. We want that 10 X leverage. We don't want other people knowing about it. We don't want to share, but now that it's out in the open with the consumer tools, everybody now knows it's possible. And that's where you start to see like the societal change. It's funny. Scarcity mindset, huh? It's funny how, funny how that was, that, that runs rampant in our industry too. Yep. Uh, so, okay. So now here we are, and like you mentioned some examples of AI pre chat GPT. Uh, now here we are, you know, chat GPT came around, we're asking questions. It's the way I describe it to people is that, and I, I, I use this example. So I speak on like, you know, technology, social, how it's going to affect real estate. And every year as I was doing this, uh, I've done this for the last few years, I go to Google in January to, you know, and throughout the year to update my presentation. I ask it questions. I read a bunch of articles. This year, I did the same process, takes me several hours. And then I went to ChatGPT and asked it the same question. And it basically summarized what took me several hours in, you know, 10 seconds. And then I was, I was pissed for a minute, like, damn it, I just wasted all that time. Uh, but, you know, it just, it kind of dawned on me and it made me realize like, holy crap, like this is, it's going to save me so much time. Um, but then there's the other side of the coin where I'm thinking about, is this going to make a lazy society even lazier? And, 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 and the way I think about it, which I want to go deeper on when it comes to like helping me with 
captioning, scripting, blog writing, uh, ideas for content, which is a very, you know, common thing that most real estate agents are, are living in that world. You know, is it going to get to the point, are the, are the receiving platforms, Google SEO type platforms, Facebooks, Instagrams, you know, are they going to build their algorithms or are their algorithms or are they going to learn what is AI driven versus what has human element or is human driven and actually reward human over AI? Do you see that as a potential quote unquote threat to the human that thinks this is going to replace effort? I don't, man, that's a great question. Um, I think there's a couple pieces there. One, the idea of picking up a, a power drill instead of using a whatever hand crank, that's still a choice. Artisans are still going to exist and people that use automation are still going to exist. And I think one of the neat piece about what we're seeing with this is that there's always those fears of, am I going to be watching a thousand YouTube videos and none of those people are real? And I think all of us would choose to engage with content where there's relationship. So if I knew there was a, a Jeff Fitzer AI or Jeff Fitzer real, I'm going to watch the real one because I actually care about the emotions, the connections and I care about seeing who you actually are, not just seeing your content. I can go read unlimited content anytime I want to already. And so I think it gives more leverage to the people that are diligent, but there's always going to be people that are going to say, Hey, I'm going to go pump out 10,000 blog articles and whatever. That's not necessarily going to help you because even today, if you don't put those up in the right places, if you don't use the right keywords, if you just like we've seen people um, just go put tons and tons of content out there. Well, that might dilute the keywords they're actually going for from an SEO perspective. And more is not necessarily better. Real and engaging and personal is still better. And so you're going to see kind of a flood of probably a lot of people doing it the wrong way and are going to hurt themselves, which will let the people doing it the right way stand out even more because they're just doing more of the wrong thing. And then from the standpoint of how we use them, the tools are changing so fast. I think it's a little bit more of how do we just prepare ourselves for what's coming? Because the platforms are adjusting. Um, it's getting harder to tell between AI written and human written, but what it goes down to, like with a lot of like, let's pick on the Google algorithms, is how are people engaging with it? Just because you have a lot of content, if people aren't gonna engage and if it's not useful to them, then it's not gonna matter. There's just gonna be a bigger sea that they have to surf through to figure out who to elevate to the top.